Hi, I'm Devin Dean, Content Director here at ProjectManager.com. In today's whiteboard session, I'm going to go through the process to help you pick out your supplier from the crowd of vendors that are at, is after your business. Now look, it's really a, um, a five-step process when you're doing your contract with your supplier, going out to the market and finding, picking the right supplier. There's three main phases, the pre-award phase, the award phase, and the post-award phase. And in those phases, we've got some little sub-streams sub here. We've got the point of where you're trying to figure out what you need, um, going out to get it, figuring out who you're going to buy it from, and then actually doing the deal. And once the deal is done, managing and negotiating the contract, just making sure, administering the contract to make sure that the project is going and, and meeting the objectives of that contract. In today's session, I'm only going to cover the first four bits. Yep. Okay. So first off, what do you need? Look, it's incredibly important for you as a buyer to really understand as best you can what you're actually wanting from a supplier or a partner. The less you know about that, the higher risk of uh, uncertainty of actually getting what you're and getting what you want from your supplier. If you don't know a heck of a lot about what you want, make sure that you engage with a partner that can then and, and you have commercial terms eventually that allow you to shape your final outcome. But I can tell you, the better you know what you want, the better outcome you're going to have. So once you determine and you go to your board and you get your project approved, the first thing they're going to want you to do is uh, make sure you do an internal cost estimate. So do your own homework to figure out what you think the actual project is going to cost um, to produce those deliverables. Once you get that um, cost estimate together, go out and procure it. And what does that mean? It means do things like look through the history of um, commercial terms that you have with your current suppliers, figure out um, which one of those can actually do the work for you, give them a call, give them the ring and, and let them know that you're interested in doing some more work. Or if there isn't anyone in your current um, portfolio of, uh, of approved suppliers, you may want to do a ring around, you know, get some references, check around and basically get a list of um, maybe your top 10 people, top 10 customers, Co companies who could actually do the work for you on the project that you're working for. So once you've done that, you're going to go get it, right? So in going and getting it, you have a variety of ways to whittle down that list of 10, let's say, down to maybe three, maybe four at the most, okay? You can do what's called an expression of interest. So you, you issue an expression of interest to the, um, the list of, of, of potential vendors and partners that you want to do business with. Um, they'll come back to you and say, yes, they're interested in doing business with you on that particular project. They might give you a little bit more about their company and why they think they'll be more competitive than others. Um, and, and basically what you're doing is you're filtering down your list of, um, let's say, 10 down to maybe six or seven, okay? Then if you have the time and, and, and the project requires it, you might do an RFI, which is a request for information. So you're asking more specific information of that partner to get a better understanding of who they are and why they're the best supplier for you. Once again, the whole intent is to whittle down your funnel of potential suppliers down to a handful, right? After you do an RFI, you might decide that you need to do an RFP, Request for Proposal. Now this is the opportunity to go down to those, let's say, five potential vendors and ask them to get into the details of what you want and give, them a, give you back a proposal on how they're going to deliver those goods and for what the cost is. Once you finish with an RFP, you may decide that's fine, you're good there, you're gonna, now you've selected one potential partner to do business with and you go out and do the contract negotiations, or you may decide, okay, well, I'm really not sure, it's down to two, maybe I'll do a request for quotation, which is the next level of detail down. And in this one, you as a, as a buyer are gonna work very, very closely with your supplier on getting that quotation um, as, as precise as possible. In many cases, this might be a paid engagement, so you'll pay your two potential suppliers a small amount of money, let's say a, a fraction of the cost of the contract, to actually go through with you and do a little bit more analysis and get that finer detail so they can do a request for quotation. Um, and in some occasions, you might have them do a proof of concept as part of that request for quotation to demonstrate those capabilities that you'd like to see on the proper project. At any rate, what you're trying to do is whittle down the list of potential suppliers down to, let's say, two, a primary and a secondary. Once you get that and you get the supplier estimate and their quotation, then you can start doing your negotiations with them. Part and parcel to that is understanding what the risk of the cost 
is. So how risky is that cost of your project to go above your budget? The total cost of the project and any uncertainty levels that you might have. In this particular phase, you're also determining the right commercial vehicle to use. So is it going to be a cost plus a percentage of cost? Is it going to be a firm fixed price? Is it going to be a contract somewhere in the middle, maybe like a cost um, plus an incentive fee? This is a time to work that out and to enter into the negotiations with your supplier. It's not always just about here's the effort, here's the cost, this is what the price is. You know, it's, there's a lot of things to think about in that negotiation. Make sure that when you go into those negotiations, you have a good understanding of what are the things that you're designing in terms of behavior for your supplier and they also have a good understanding of the behaviors that you want and the attributes that you want to see on your project. It's not just about the um, indeliverable and it's not just about the price when you go into those negotiations. Make sure that you um, basically have your list of things to negotiate on and you can work with your buyer, work with your supplier to come up to a, 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 um, a good conclusion that's going to have a commercial construct that's going to work for both you as the uh, buyer and them as a the seller because the worst thing you can do on a project, especially a risky one, is to have a contract, go with the lowest bidder and drive that supplier out of business. When you do that, you're not going to get what you want. They're obviously going to have a, a crash and burn and their business is going to go under and it's going to take you twice as long to get your product or your in delivery out because now you got to go pick another supplier. So this is a very important phase. Um, many times uh, customers that I deal with have a whole procurement team who help with this process, who take the buyer and the seller as almost an independent party. They uh, come in and they facilitate the negotiation and make sure that we can get a deal done. Also, um, you'll probably want to involve your legal team to help you with that contract. Sometimes you as a buyer write it, sometimes a seller writes it. Irregardless of who writes it, you certainly want to have a third party, a legal party, go through those commercial terms and just make sure that the clauses in there are sensible and they protect you against the things that are important to you as a business, as a buyer, and likewise a seller will do the same thing from their side. Once the negotiations are completed and the contract terms are outlined, you can then let the contract to the seller. Now what this looks like is usually you'll have a master agreement which talks about the general behaviors of how you as a buyer and as a seller are going to operate in doing business together and then you'll have a little bit more detailed um, what's called a statement of work or maybe a terms of reference or a schedule, right? In that schedule, statement of work or terms of reference are the details of the specific um, project that you want to have accomplished that have clauses and details that are really more relevant just to the, that item. So. Um, sometimes you'll just have that statement of work and other times you'll have that master services agreement and a statement of work. In all cases, make sure you have a legal person help you review both of those documents and ensure that the clauses are realistic, appropriate um, and doing the right thing for both the buyer and the seller. Once you've let the contract, now you can give that to the project manager and away they go. So in summary, when you're looking to choose a supplier from a field of potential um, vendors, it's really important you, you go through a process, know that you've got um, four different steps in the pre-award, the award, and the post-award phase to get through. And most importantly, the more you know about what you want at the start of the process, the better the outcome is going to be in terms of choosing the right supplier and getting the right commercial terms and contract together to um, engage on that project with the supplier. For other project management tips and tricks, and to try out our software, come sign up at projectmanager.com.